Good morning. Pray first. It is the top of the hour at 7 a.m. on Monday. It's Monday, what, the 9th of November. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Pray First. It's 7 o'clock. If I did, I said, I know I said that already, but I'm using a, uh, my computer today instead of a phone to do this. So, anyway, hello, I'm Brandy Bell. So excited to see you. I hope you're having a great morning so far. It is Magnificent Monday. Let's not call it a Manic Monday. Hello, Tasha. Hey, Kimmy. Um, so glad that you guys are coming in here. If you will, share this out on your page. Uh, tag folks in the comments. Um, you have stumbled upon, if you're brand new with us, this is Pray First. It's not just a title. It is a thing that we do. It's a lifestyle. We put God first. We acknowledge Him and uh, praise Him the first part of our day, the first part of our week. We honor Him with our tithes and our offerings and just everything that we do. We make our lives God-centered and I'm not always the best at it. I'm still learning. We're all still learning to be followers of Christ. So today on the 9th, of November. Man, it's getting so close to Christmas, isn't it? And Thanksgiving. Goodness gracious, I can already smell the turkey. <laughs> well, hashtag live if you're live at the seven o'clock hour. Hashtag recorded if you're here at any other time. And we would love to say hello to you. And I, what I mean by we, I mean all of those that are going to be putting the hearts and the likes. Hit those right now for me, please, and let everybody know that you're here, and we want to welcome you and let everybody know um, that this is a, it's like a family. I mean, that's what we are. We we are doing everything from ministering to people on the other side of the world, ministering to people on the other side of the uh, the country. Uh, we're doing great, amazing things that be in the hands and feet of, of people, praying for others, encouraging others, and we'd love for you to be a part of that. So, this morning, I would like to um, talk about um, faith. Now, I've done Pray First pr fairly regularly um, over the past couple of years. Um, God, uh, God and Doug has given me the opportunity to do that, and I'm grateful for that opportunity. And um, Anyway, I've talked about faith before, but can I just tell you that there's so much information about faith in the Bible. I mean, it could, it could take forever. Um, and if I'm not really commenting, I apologize. Um, I don't really know how to, to see the comments um, <laughs> really on this. This is a totally different format that I'm used to. Um, but please, um just comment and say hello and all that good stuff because I will go back and watch this afterwards and say hello and try to comment. Okay, so have you ever said or have you ever had anyone say to you, I just can't or I just can't do blank or I just can't do that or I just can't believe I don't have, because I just don't have any faith. Have you ever had anybody say that? Good morning, Delilah. Um, if you will, just give me your, you know, comments or whatever. Let me know that, that you, you have heard that or you have um, said that yourself, maybe. What if, I think we all have. Let me just preface that. I think we've all said that at some point. And, um... We think of faith as maybe kind of like a mystical thing or this magical thing or whatever. But what if I said faith was a basic fundamental that we all have? A basic fundamental. We're designed as humans to have faith. Did you know that? We are. We're designed to have faith. Uh, oh, Brandy, I'm not just talking about faith in a biblical sense, okay? I'm talking about faith in general, just faith in general. Um, and if you don't believe me, I hope that after this, you'll, you'll, you'll see that it's true. So, 
by faith, when you woke up this morning, first of all, when you went to sleep last night, by faith, <laughs> you, you believed that you were going to get another day this morning, right? By faith, you accept that the phone or the computer that you're trying to log in to Facebook is going to work. There's no guarantee that it's going to. It should in all accounts. By faith, the radio that you're listening to music or the car that you're driving in cranked this morning. <laughs> oh my goodness. By faith, the chair you are sitting in is holding you up. It's supporting you. It, it could fail on you, right? By faith, the roof won't cave in this morning. By faith, our family will do and say what we expect, right? Okay. Faith, in other words, is an automatic response, guys. Y'all getting what I'm saying? When we plug in, like you plug an a, appliance in, you plug anything in, what do you expect it to do? You believe it's going to work, right? You have faith. In the manufacturer, you have faith in your friends and family. You have faith in the vehicle that you're driving. You have faith in the chair that it's going to hold you. We just don't think about it that way, right? Hashtag, yep, yep. Hashtag, gotta have faith. We put our faith in people. We put our faith in things. We put our faith in belief systems. We put our faith in false gods, in philosophies, in teachings. And what do they do? They let us down. They let us down. Okay, so I'm going to talk about, um, and if you know me at all, you know that um, in this way, I am a lot like Jesus. I speak in parables. Um, I don't know that they're necessarily parables because they're not really a story, but I use a lot of analogy and relation relating to parallels with everyday items, everyday occurrences that we come in contact with. And for me, it, it helps because when I think about those items, when I see those clouds when i see those parking meters when i see uh, and if you if you <laughs> if you have listened to any of the pray first that i've been on you know that i will say stuff like that um to kind of help us all get on the same page in other words okay did you know that faith is like riding a bike it is Um, it's seven, right? Okay. <laughs> I saw George say, I didn't know that the time changed. So anyway, okay. Riding a bike and faith are, faith is like riding a bike. Let's go there. Okay. Number one, you're timid. Okay. You don't think you can do it. Okay. Number two, your parent or your friend brings the bike to you, encourages you to get on the bike, okay? Encourages you to try, to believe in yourself, believe that the bike is going to work. Number three, you, in faith, get on the bike, not knowing if it's going to hold you up, if you can balance yourself on two wheels, if you can do what you have seen others do, what seems to you impossible. I hope some of y'all have ears to hear and eyes to see um, what, you know, what I'm saying right now. Okay, number four, you're wobbly, you know. It's, it's very, very new to you. You're wobbly and you pedal and you try to steer. And number five, Maybe you fall off. Maybe you don't. However, you can now see that the little bit of faith, the little bit of faith, that belief that you think you can, but you don't know for sure, 
Oh, that is faith. That is faith, faith, faith. It is. Um, it reminds me of the verse in Matthew 17, 20 that says, I tell you the truth. Let me read it over here so I don't keep going out of the frame. Okay. I tell you the truth. If you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. We have faith, guys. We have it. It's already in us. God has already equipped inside of us that little measure of faith. Now, whether we let it grow, I think of that, that movie, The Lorax, let it grow, let it grow. Okay, anyway, sorry. They're talking about seeds in there too. <laughs> so, hey, um, if, you're, if you've got, um, you know, small children, then you might relate to that. <laughs> oh, next time you watch the Lorax and they're trying to plant the seed, then you'll understand. Okay, but we, God has planted inside of us this seed of faith, this ability to believe. Now, it may be this teeny, teeny, tiny little bit of faith like a mustard seed, but it will grow. And how does it grow? By going through stuff, by trusting, by not being in control. Do you know how hard that is to not be in control of yourself, to not be in control of everything that's going on in your life, to not be in control of your circumstances? Yeah, it stinks. But but God, right? But God. How many of y'all love that phrase? Hashtag, yep, yep. Um, but God, he wants to change us. He wants to, after he's planted that seed in us, he wants to grow. And the only way to make it grow is and strong in the faith is to have to go through stuff. Okay? Now, um, so my back to my parallel. Mark 9, 24 says, immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I believe, help my, help me overcome my unbelief. So, you know what? Um, I, I believe that Jesus even goes on right there and, and talks about this man's faith and how great it is. Because this is a centurion who needs his child to be well. And he says, I believe but I don't believe in it uh, completely. I need your help to overcome that. How many of you guys have something in your life right now that you need, you believe, but you just don't know? You know, you believe a little bit, but you just don't know. You know, say so that hashtag that's me. When we are coming to faith in the Lord Jesus, number one, here's your parallel. We don't know if we can believe. We don't know if we can. We don't know if we can believe like these friends of ours who's invited us to church. These friends of ours that have invited us to um, listen to what they have to say. These men or women that we read about in the Bible. We don't know that we can, we can trust that. We don't know if we can truly believe that. Number two, our friends, our family, our pastor, our acquaintance, whomever that encourages us or brings the word to us. Number three, with that smallest amount of faith, the smallest amount of faith, you take a step forward in whatever area in your life that you need to in regards to your faith. You take a step forward. When you go for a job interview, you don't know if you're going to get it or not. You have faith that you're going to get it. So you take a step forward, you fix your resume, you do it in faith, you prepare for it, you buy a new outfit or a new suit or whatever, you prepare for it, you're believing, right? You're believing for what's going to happen on the other side. That's built inside of you from God. So number three, with this smallest amount of faith, you take a step forward. Number four, you surrender to the call of the Holy Spirit right? Maybe you're a little bit wobbly. You just don't know how this is going to work and what's expected of you and just all this kind of stuff and you just don't know. 
So just like with the Bible, or with the bike, I mean, <laughs> excuse me, the more you get on it, the more you get on the bike, the more you trust that you have, the more trust that you have in it. It's just like faith. The more you put it into action, the more you give God that trust that you release it over to him, the more your faith builds. And what started out faith is small as a mustard seed has now grown with every trip on your bicycle, right? Every time you get on it, it's like, man, you know, and then at, the more you do it, you get on it and you're just like, I know I'm confident. I'm confident in this bike. I'm confident that it, um, that as long as I keep going, that it's going to carry me. Guys, keep going. As long as you keep going, you know, your faith is going to build. You're going to have trials. You're going to have tribulation. You're going to have areas where you have to surrender. You're going to have to surrender to God. So with every day, with every new area of your life that you trust God, it will develop your faith. Some areas are going to be more difficult. It's going to be that box over in the corner that you're hiding. You don't want him to have. You don't want him to control that area. But just open it up. Let him have it. Because the more that you are honest and open and trust him, it's hard to trust. It's hard to trust when you don't know. You think you have to do it all. But God if you will give him that measure of faith, he you can trust him, you guys. You can so trust him. Whew. I have surgery on Wednesday, and I'm having to sit in a position of trust, in a position of faith, that now, that this is the way that God is choosing to heal me. With every surgery, there's complication possibilities, but I'm believing in faith that this is the way God is choosing to heal me, that I have more to accomplish on this earth and that um, the surgery is going to be successful and all of that. I'm going to trust him, right? What area of your life do you need to trust him more? What area of your life do you feel wobbly and unsure? You're wanting to believe, but not knowing if you can do it. So what are you believing God for? Are you believing that he's going to intervene in some area of your life? You can trust him. You can trust him. What mustard seed of faith do you have to do what he's called you to do? Not just be a follower of Christ and try to not just be a Christian, let me say that. Not just be a Christian. I'm talking about a follower. What does a follower do? If you're playing the game, follow the leader. Remember when you were a kid, you did what the leader was doing. They raised their hand, you raised their hand. If they they hopped on one foot, you hopped on one foot. If they stuck their tongue out, you stuck your tongue out. It's follow the leader, right? We as followers of Christ follow our leader, right? So what mustard seed of faith do you have to do what he's called you to do? If he's called you to do it, He's already equipped you. You have everything inside of you to do what you have been called to do. You just have to take that step. Got to get on the bicycle. Maybe it's problems that you've got going on relationship-wise. Maybe it's um, sickness or health issues. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's where you feel like the country should be and the country isn't. I, I don't know what's going on. I got my own little world that I'm over here trying to 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 trust in. <laughs> and you know what? It's going to be tested. Your faith is going to be tested. It just is. It's the way that um that God disciplines us. It's the way that he molds us into who we're going to be. Do y'all know that this is not the end here that when we take our last breath, we have a first breath somewhere else? It's your decision. It's your choice, whether it's going to be with our Father, God, or with the enemy in hell. So, oh gosh. <sighs> Trust. 
trust him. And for us that trust him with our eternity, our eternity, there's no end to it. How about we trust him with our day to day? Our day to day. Why does it seem so much harder sometimes with the day to day than it does with the eternity? You know? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you that you've already given us the ability to have faith. We just have to take the step out and do, and do something and just take a step and trust that you've got this, that you whatever you've called us to do, that you've put it inside of us, the ability to do it. We don't have to read a bunch of self-help books. We don't have to, you know, listen to the latest, you know, motivating guru or whatever to you know, to learn how to do it. You've already equipped us to do all that we are called to do. So Father, I thank you. Be with everyone here that's hearing this. Lord, let it minister to them in some way, God. Your word says, um, the word says, <laughs> your word does not return void. So Father, I thank you. You can be trusted and that you love us in spite of ourselves. In Jesus' name, I love you guys. Hashtag live, hashtag shared, hashtag recorded. Share this on your page. And if you will, consider sharing the actual go to the Pastor Doug Bell page um, that you're on now and look for share this out or invite your friends to like this because if, they invite, if they're invited and they like it, they'll get these notifications um, in the morning and hopefully they'll be able to join us. We would love for them to be a part of our Pray First family. Y'all have a great, make it a good day because it already is. You're living and breathing. In Jesus' name, we pray, Father, thank you so much for your love, and thank you for this day we have. Amen. Love y'all. I don't think I know how to end this thing.